Thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a second. Can you imagine me talking too much? I, I have to get a drink of water. So, so forgive me. But we were, I was talking. It's really great being here today. And um, I, it's, uh, it's always great to meet you folks here. And, and um, it gives you some rejuvenation and, and so forth that was going forward. Today I was asked to speak about one of my bills that uh, I'm trying to go, uh, go forward, and I, have, and I really appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak about Senate Bill 869, my civil asset forfeiture bill. Now a lot of folks are saying, okay, Mike, why, why are you doing this? Why, why are you doing this bill? Well, I'll tell you very simply. There's three reasons why Mike Falmer is doing the civil asset forfeiture bill. And I'm going to go to our Bill of Rights, our Constitution. Imagine that. First reason, our Fourth Amendment, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. Reason number two. Fifth Amendment, nor be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. Reason number three, our Sixth Amendment. In all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury of the states and districts wherein the crime shall be committed, which districts shall have been previously ascertained by law and be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation, to be comforted with the witnesses against him, to have compulsory process obtaining witnesses in his favor, and to have an assistance of counsel for his defense. Contrary, contrary to what I've been accused of, these are the true reasons why Mike Falmer has introduced Senate Bill 869. It wasn't to force our law enforcement to close shop. It wasn't to, to give, as this, this bill was accused of being, and, and I was accused of, actually it was in a local newspaper that stated that this is an appalling piece of legislation that is a drug runner's bill of rights, and it's not that whatsoever. Ladies and gentlemen, it's plain and simple. I just want to make sure that those three reasons are not being violated. Folks, we have taken this document, our Constitution, way too lightly. And our legislators have not taken this document strong enough. Although we take an oath to this document, we don't pay attention to it. And, and, and when you look at what's been going on in, in our civil asset forfeiture laws, you're, you're going to see that, that it's, it's just been a, 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 I think, in some cases, real violations to really good people. Point in case, and I'm going to scroll down to a, a scenario that happened just in Philadelphia not too long ago. This was a couple, um, and... and uh, they were, uh, they were accused of, of, and they were fearful of losing their home through this forfeiture aspect. Excuse me as I come to this point here. Uh, forgive me. I'm using an electronic thing, which I never should have done. <laughs> I usually do it by paper. Mary and Leon. Mary and Leon are 68 and 70 years old never ran afoul against the law, solid citizens. He was a former retired steel worker. Mary worked as a retail salesperson, was even a formal, former block captain in her neighborhood in North Philadelphia. They lived very modestly. <laughs> the district attorney of Philadelphia sought to take their homes because their son was allegedly selling marijuana with one small sale purportedly on their porch. Their home, nowhere, their home and nowhere to go, 
and also battling cancer, they, they became very scared. They owned their home outright while they're still paying their t property taxes, but they, they, they owned their, their, their home outright. And they were pitted against the state. The state. This was just wrong. And I'll tell you what is really wrong, and this is gonna sound maybe a little liberal, so don't everybody throw stuff at me right now. Andy Reid, who was the football coach of the Philadelphia Eagles, son was caught selling cocaine, and, and if I remember the quote in the Philadelphia Inquirer said that his home looked like a drug euporium. His home wasn't being threatened to be taken because Andy Reid had an army of attorneys to do his forefront. But what about us, the average citizen, who may be faced with such a thing? Ladies and gentlemen, this doesn't happen in all across the state, but it does happen. And when you do a bill in the state of Pennsylvania, you've got to do a bill that's going to cover all aspects. And the purpose of, of Senate Bill 869 is very simple. And this would be the process. See, presently the process is, if you are convicted or sus subjected to, and then this was another case where a home was raided, and, the, and because of a third party who was living there, uh, the one daughter's piggy bank that had $91 in it was taken. And it took them 10 months to get that back. When the federal government came up with civil asset forfeiture it was to crack down on the drug cartels, the Pablo Escobars and so forth. It was about taking their yachts, taking their, 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 their illegal gotten gains through an illicit activity called drug and put pushing drugs and so forth, which is a terrible thing. But it wasn't about $91 or taking a home from, from a couple whose son was and wasn't ever convicted of selling a, a small amount of marijuana, and I know I've been the, the prime sponsor of a medical cannabis bill. It sounds like, it sounds like I'm, I'm here defending marijuana. I'm not. I'm defending the rights of Mary and Leon. What they went through should never have happened, not in this country that was founded on our freedoms, our Bill of Rights. You know, when I speak to groups of conservatives, I just wish we would get as fired up about our fourth, fifth, and sixth amendments as we are fired up about our second amendment. I'm just telling you that. And until we, and because what is happening right now, ladies and gentlemen, what is happening right now is that we are like a frog in, 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 put in a cold pot of water, and they're slowly turning up the heat, and we don't realize what's happening to us. And these rights, these Bill of Rights are so important. Look, I'm not for drug dealers, but I'm going to side on the side of caution. What I'm looking for in my bill is simply this. You have a, a drug arrest. You make your arrest. Don't seize it, but you, you can take the property, put it on hold, get your conviction. Once you get your conviction, seize the property. But no one, no one, and remember how dangerous this can be. No one should be able to be, well, frankly, aren't we all innocent until proven guilty? Am I right? Or are we not all innocent until proven guilty? And, and that's the whole basis of, of, of Senate Bill 869. I, I'm presently working with the DA's association because my, my goal wasn't here to battle the DA. And there's a lot of good a, DA's that are doing the right thing here. With, with, this, with, with, with these funds, and, and we're working on a, on a compromise. And I think one is gonna come forth, because my main goal for this bill was simply the protection of our fourth, fifth, and amendment rights. I'm not trying to hurt law enforcement, I'm not trying to hurt the good DAs out there that are doing the right thing, but Philadelphia was not doing the right thing. Their average asset that they were seizing was 80% was of their assets was, was in cash, and the average asset seized was $191. So if you were found and, and couldn't explain why you had $400 on you or $200 on you, and they said, well, we're thinking that you sold some drugs here, we're gonna take that money. That is just wrong. That is not what we were found. We're, this is not Sheriff of Nottingham time, you know? This is, this is the United States of America who, who so many brave men and women have fought for us to defend these rights. And we as citizens need to defend these rights. These are our rights. We're still, I'm hoping, a constitutional representative republic. I'm hoping that we still honor these things. 
And we've got to stop arbitrarily changing this. If we want to change this Constitution, and we're going to change this Constitution, please allow it only to be changed through the amendment process. And why is that so important? <laughs> Folks, we should be fired up about this. Why is that so important? Because, you see, through the amendment process, I think what we're forgetting is that our government isn't a bunch of guys in Washington, D.C. or Harrisburg. It's you. It's we the people. And we have in Article 1, and I'll get a little off, this is my ADHD moment, squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Article 1, Section 2 of our state constitution. By the way, Article 1 in our state constitution is basically our Bill of Rights. But this is a beautiful piece here. Think about this. All power is inherent in the people, and all free governments are founded on their authority and instituted for their peace, safety, and happiness. For the advancements of these ends, they have at all times an inalienable and indefeasible right to alter, reform, or abolish in such their government in such manner as they think proper. It's our government. It's your government. These are your rights. You should be standing up and should be as angry when someone tries to take your gun away from you if they're trying to take away your fourth, fifth, or sixth amendment rights or any of the bill or any of these rights away without properly doing so. When we start doing it arbitrarily, when we start changing it arbitrarily, that's when we lose. And basically George Washington said this, and I'm gonna paraphrase it in his farewell address. He said, this document, in a sense, and don't yell at me, in a sense, is a living document, but it should only be alive through the amendment process. We, the people, could change it. We can add to it or take away from it, but it should only through, be through the will of the people. This is our government. Senate Bill 869 is, is not trying to be, uh, uh, like I said, a drug runner's bill of rights. It's basically protecting our bill of rights to make sure that we follow the process. Arrest, hold, convict, then seize. That's the property. It shouldn't be arrest, seize, and then you have to fight like crazy to try to get back your property. That's all that we're trying to do, and I think that we're working on it, and we're gonna get it done, and it's gonna be a good thing, and, uh, and, a, and, a, and a victory for our Constitution. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Have a great day, and uh, hope I didn't bore you.